Welcome to the Invite Health Podcast, where our degreed healthcare professionals are excited to offer you the most important health and wellness information you need to make informed choices about your health. You can learn more about the products discussed in each of these episodes and all that Invite Health has to offer at www.invitehealth.com slash podcast. First time customers can use promo code podcast at checkout for an additional 15% off your first purchase. Let's get started. Inflammaging. This is a term that I really like to talk about because it's so common. And what we're really at the end of the day discussing is the chronic low grade inflammation that leads to an accelerated aging process. And we know many different things about chronic low grade inflammation. And today I wanted to discuss in more details, really the the pathogenesis of this and what we can be doing. And I want to talk and focus in on one particular component, and that is coming from our adrenal glands and looking at DHEA. And so I'm going to talk in a lot of detail about DHEA and how DHEA controls so many aspects of our inflammatory response as well as our immune system response. So I am Amanda Williams, MD, MPH, and let's get right to it. I often talk about inflammaging. So this is that chronic inflammation that leads to accelerated aging. And what we know is that long-term chronic low-grade inflammation is a contributing factor to nearly every single chronic disease state out there. So when we look at heart disease, when we look at diabetes, when we look at chronic kidney disease, we can even look at issues such as Alzheimer's disease. We can link chronic inflammation to all of these particular conditions. Now, what we need to recognize is the pathogenesis and understanding the difference between acute inflammation, which is welcome. This is the type of inflammation that is actually protecting us from injury and infection versus chronic inflammation, which is damaging at a cellular level, which can lead to overall systemic dysfunction. So we know that. We know that having a diet that is packed with foods that are high in antioxidants and omega-3 fatty acids, for example, are very, very beneficial when it comes to keeping our bodies in a lowered inflammatory status. And this is why I so often refer to the Mediterranean diet. So this is why you want to fill your plates with bright, colorful fruits and vegetables and, you know, have things like seeds and nuts as snacks as opposed to, say, chips and crackers. So all of these things can certainly help to keep the body in a state of much less inflammation. We know that those high sugar foods, those bad carbohydrates definitely can drive up that inflammation. We want to incorporate high fatty fish, salmon, for example. We know that that is certainly something that can help with easing inflammation because we're getting greater exposure of those omega-3 fatty acids. So we know this. We know that we want to have, as just part of a basic supplementation routine, omega-3s on board, so fish oil or krill oil or flaxseed oil, for example. We know that we want to have high antioxidants in our daily supplementation routine. So coming from things like a multivitamin that's going to provide us with things like vitamin C and vitamin E, all of those powerful carotenoids that we get from zeaxanthin, for example, all of these are aspects that we get not only from our diet, but also from supplementation. Now, I want to talk specifically about inflammaging and DHEA. Now, DHEA should not be confused with the omega-3 fatty acid, which is DHA. So DHEA is a hormone that is actually produced in the adrenal gland. Now DHEA is known as dehydroepiandrosterone, and this is the most abundant of all of our steroid hormones that is produced within the adrenal glands. Now in women, the majority of DHEA is going to be coming strictly from the adrenals. In men, they produce the majority, once again, from the adrenals, but they may get a small amount made from the testes as well. But DHEA is really critical to our overall wellness for a variety of different reasons. Now, we know that DHEA is made from cholesterol, and it is stimulated to be released by the body through what is known as ACTH, which is adrenal corticotropic hormone. 
and that is coming from the pituitary gland. So that's really kind of the interesting thing when we think about all of the the hormonal pathways and how intricate these actually are. So you have the signaling pathway that comes from the brain in the pituitary that signals that release to the adrenal glands for DHEA. So I don't want to get too into the the weeds on that, but I I certainly want to talk about the fundamental role that DHEA is playing in terms of our overall hormonal balance in our overall vitality, for example. We know that DHEA is a precursor to the manufacturing of testosterone and estrogen. So this is how we can see how other hormones can impact other hormones in the body. Now, we also know that aging itself, just the aging process can disrupt hormonal balance. We recognize this when women go through menopause or men go through andropause. But we have to not overlook the really critical role that DHEA levels are playing into all of this. So by the time you're 70, 80 years old, your DHEA levels have fallen by 80 to 90 percent compared to where they were when you were in your 20s. So I always encourage people to have comprehensive hormonal testing done, including DHEA sulfate. So not just the standard DHEA test, but have the DHEA sulfate test done. Now, there have been multiple studies done on DHEA. Even if you look in the National Library of Medicine, where all of the peer-reviewed journals are housed, you will find over 15,000 papers that look at the role of DHEA in the human body. So you would think that, just even as a layperson, that you would know more about DHEA. But it is so under estimated in terms of its importance and never talked about in the traditional medical community. So that's why I wanted to focus in on this because we know that many of these studies have shown that low levels of circulating DHEA sulfate in the body are linked with the pathophysiological changes in numerous age-associated diseases. So we look at cognitive decline, when we look at cardiovascular disease, when we look at bone loss, for example, We look at low mood, so even with issues with depression and anxiety, we look at sexual dysfunction, and that makes sense because we know that the DHEA is utilized as that precursor hormone to the making of testosterone and estrogen. So all of these things are connected, but we also know that DHEA has been widely studied in a variety of different inflammatory disorders. So when you have low DHEA, this can make a huge impact on the rate of inflammation within the body. Now, so many different studies out there indicating just how it is that DHEA is working. And there was a study that was done and published in 2011 in the Journal of Aging, looking specifically at how DHEA supplementation could have an impact on certain markers for inflammation. So this was a randomized double-blind placebo-controlled trial where they found that DHEA supplementation helped to improve improve levels for these different markers that they were looking at, things like TNF-alpha, tumor necrosis factor alpha, IL-6, for example, which is another marker for looking at chronic inflammation. But also in the study, they found that those who were supplementing with DHEA actually had an improvement in their triglycerides as well as in their blood glucose levels. So that shows you the way that DHEA is impacting so many different systems. So when we think about cardiovascular system, okay, now we understand that DHEA is playing this role in helping to normalize proper cholesterol transport. So this is one of those areas where once again, I wish doctors would number one, test for it more frequently, but also understand the ramifications of what low levels of DHEA can actually have. Now, when it comes to supplementing with DHEA, the big question is, you know, how much should I be taking? And that really depends on where your current blood levels are. As a general rule, women generally may need about 25 milligrams of DHEA per day, men 50 milligrams of DHEA per day. But that's a general rule. Obviously, there can be variables to this depending upon where your actual blood levels are. So I want to talk about 
what happens when DHEA levels are low. When they are too low, so say you go and you have your blood level tested and it comes back and your serum level is low, then what we know is that this can lead to the ability for a healthy immune system response, a healthy inflammatory response, healthy blood glucose regulation. We know that that can impact our cardiovascular health, our bone health, brain health, muscle health, all of these things that we know. We know that sarcopenia, age-related muscle mass loss, is directly correlated to things such as low vitamin D and low DHEA. So these are all things that we know. Now, when we think about the cardiovascular system, I want to talk about a particular study, and this was published in the American College of Cardiology. So this is their journal, the Journal of the American College of Cardiology. And they published the findings from researchers in Sweden showing an association between higher levels of DHEA circulating in the blood and a reduced risk of coronary heart disease. Now, that's really important because this is the Journal of the American College of of cardiology. So you would think, okay, if cardiologists are reading the journal based upon their discipline, that more cardiologists would take their patients and say, okay, you know, I'm not just going to order a standard cholesterol panel. I also want to look and see what is going on with your DHEA levels. Because we know from this study in Sweden that when they looked at the serum levels of DHEA in over 2,600 men in Sweden between the ages of 69 and 80 years old, they found that the men who had the higher levels of DHEA had a greater decrease in risk of cardiovascular disease. And they said that the endogenous production, which means the internal production of DHEA, has this protective factor against coronary heart disease. So if your levels are low, because the body is not making enough, then we need to be putting that back in. And so these are areas that, as I mentioned, never get talked about enough. The American Heart Association published in their journal called Stroke, in conjunction with the researchers from Brigham and Women's Hospital and Harvard School of Public Health, the association between low levels of DHEA and a greater risk of stroke in older women. So in this particular study, They were looking at the DHEA sulfate levels in women, and they found that those women who had the lowest levels, those that fell into that 25% lowest category, had an exponentially higher risk for having a stroke. And they said, to our knowledge, this was the first report to evaluate DHEA sulfate levels and the risk of ischemic stroke. In this particular cohort study of older women, these results suggest evidence for an inverse association between DHEA levels and strokes. So lower levels, greater likelihood of having a stroke. So these are all things that we know, but yet people still are unaware of just the importance that DHEA actually plays in our overall health and wellness. So we talk about inflammation and that chronic inflammation, we know that DHEA is playing a role in terms of the way that the body is responding to that inflammatory response. We recognize that the immune system is highly reliant on this. These are all things that we have been able to see through these over 15,000 clinical research studies done with DHEA. I always say when there's something that the body comes equipped with and then you start to lack it, then it makes sense that we would want to replenish it. We can look at anything. We can look at collagen, for example. We know collagen levels go down as we get older. Well, it makes sense to put that back in. I always say you can look at things very simple. You either have a deficiency in something, in which case you want to replenish, or we have a toxicity in something, in which case we want to remove. Well, As we get older, we know that the deficiencies start to increase, and DHEA happens to be one of those areas. They have looked at the link between the rate of postmenopausal osteoporosis, bone loss in women, and DHEA levels. And when those DHEA levels are low, 
once again, we see this sharp increase in bone loss. Now, here's an interesting study that was done. And this was looking specifically, once again, at DHEA in its sulfated forms, that's DHEA-S, and the specific levels and how low levels of that led to a greater likelihood of insulin resistance, meaning, what is that? That means we're closer to having issues with maintaining healthy blood glucose, as well as looking at inflammatory cytokines. And we know that there were significant cytokines that they looked at. TNF-alpha is another one of those ones that I will mention again. So tumor necrosis factor alpha levels were higher in those who had low DHEA, meaning what? That we have this direct correlation between low levels of this very critical hormone and high levels of inflammation, increased cardiovascular risk, increased likelihood of metabolic syndrome, so high glucose, high triglycerides, and increased risk for greater chronic inflammation to occur. All of these things that we know. Now, here's just an interesting, um, another study on, on bone health. And this was published in the Journal of Clinical Endocrinology and Metabolism, talking about, once again, how DHEA supplementation helped to support bone mineral density in men and women. Because remember, loss of bone, while it is more common in women, this also occurs in men. So do not fool yourself. So this was a double-blind, randomized control trial, giving these folks DHEA supplementation every day for 12 months, so a one-year trial. And they found that at the end of that one year, they had a marked improvement in the overall bone density. That in and of itself is incredibly important. And to be able to assess that, to look at the bone density within the lumbar spine, the the low back, looking at the bone density within the hip and understanding that when we look at something as simple as this hormone and recognizing that when that level is low, we can do so much to improve upon so many different markers in the human body to enhance our overall longevity to bolster up our immune defenses. And this is why I always encourage people, have that level tested. Next time you go to your doctor's office, request a DHEA sulfite level. If your level is low, then you want to be proactive in this and you want to make sure that you are getting adequate DHEA supplementation throughout your week to make sure that you're supporting all of these things so that you're not marching down that path towards inflammaging. So that is all that I have for you for today. I want to thank you so much for tuning in to the Invite Health Podcast. Remember, you can find all of our episodes for free wherever you listen to podcasts or by visiting invitehealth.com slash podcast. Now do make sure that you subscribe and you leave us a review. You can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and we will see you next time for another episode of the Invite Health Podcast.